All right, hopefully that's recording. Um, struggling getting this thing to work for a little while now. <laughs> so um, I'm Jack Stromelli. Uh, I did my project on the household hair dryer and applying the design for assembly uh, process to it. So I'll just kind of get into this. Um, so, oh, the two. so a brief overview on the original design. Um, this is, oh, let me get my laser pointer real quick. So a hairdryer is a device that converts electricity into heat and airflow. It is comprised mostly of injection molded parts and off-the-shelf electronics. So here are most of the injection molded parts right here. Uh, all the fan components, switches, and the shells. So uh, as you see on this device, we have uh, the red paper here. That, that's some sort of paper with a tube around it that contains the uh, electrical wires that make up the, the uh, the resistive wires that make up the heater. Those are connected with diodes and wires to the motor, and that's all connected to the switch. Uh, the switch is directly connected to these power switches here. Um, I think I call them mode switches as well. Or uh, they tell you if you want to go, it allows you to select high power or low power or off. And then there's the voltage selector switch over here, which allows uh, to go into a uh, 120 volt mode or a 240 volt mode. So that is the original design. Um, uh, why did I try to do design for assembly on this? Um, as I was taking apart, it made a lot of sense to do it because there are just a lot of, it was overly complicated um, from my understanding. There are three sub assemblies that need to be assembled before the final assembly, which I thought was kind of ridiculous for this component. Um, each of these sub assemblies need their own workstation and they need their own storage space. They need to be organized and needs to be a system for that. Um, that is unnecessary, too, mu too much work for what this is. Uh, there are blind operations like fitting in the housing into the uh, front, into the front shell. That's a blind operation. Um, I'll show you this part here, this housing going into this front shell here. Um, that's a blind operation. There are screw holes that need to line up. And if you don't line them up, you will assemble it incorrectly. The screws won't go in. And if you do try to screw them in, you will damage the shell and have to scrap the parts. So that's no good. So you're adding time and the potential to scrap. Uh, three-handed operations, or at least what I call three-handed operations, which are operations that you probably need like a jig or something to do. But either way, they require, you know, if you didn't have a jig, require more than two hands. And uh, Either way, with jig or not, that's added time to create that, and there's just more opportunity for failures there. So the small voltage switch and that small power selector, mode selector switch require a uh, three-handed operation. So this adds unnecessary time, and you can uh, you know frustrate the person uh, performing this task, and you can also injure that person. Um, and part reduction. I thought there was an awesome opportunity for part reduction. That selector, uh, mode selector, part A and B, I, there's no need to have whoops, uh, part A and B there. I, I wanted to try to challenge myself to combine that into one piece that uh, would still work. I think the big challenge for design for assembly is the uh, fact that um, you, you can sacrifice manufacturability a lot of the time when you're trying to make it easier to assemble and it was i that was definitely challenging for me and i really tried my best to maintain the same level of manufacturability while also making it way easier to assemble way better to assemble so here's that original assembly oh my goodness <laughs> there we go that original assembly so we have the three sub assemblies, which is the, the selectors going together. They actually don't combine and then go in. They combine around the shell. So that goes in the front, that goes into the back, and they combine into the shell. Uh, and that's a three-handed operation. And then the voltage selector, that, that has to be combined when the back piece is on as well. So they're all shoved in together. Um, you have to hold that in very delicately as you're putting in the back and the front shells. Yeah, so it's a three-handed operation. It was very cumbersome. Um, the motor couldn't really make that many changes to this assembly. This this sub-assembly is just necessary, and the uh, heating element as well. That's just a necessary sub-assembly. Um, this 
but the top one's not on us is not necessary. So my goal was to eliminate that cell assembly. So I did. Oh my goodness. I think it's my mouse that is sending me all the way through the front. So overview of the redesign product. So firstly, I, I eliminated that first assembly, that first sub assembly by changing the switches. So I can, did the part reduction. I made this part um, selector A and B. I made it functionally do the same task while keeping the same level of uh, manufacturability and also added this plane of symmetry so it can be inserted down here upside down and it would still work. Either way, it still works. And now that it is just press fit into the into the switch uh, that it goes into, uh, this little press fit here, uh, the glue might be necessary or epoxy might be necessary for that, but still it's such an easy, easy step. Uh, the voltage and the voltage selector. I made this into a snap fit so you don't have to wedge everything in. You just put the shell together and then you just snap this thing right into place. I did that by adding a cut and uh, adding a chamfer around here so it can bend and just snap right in. Um, so that's really convenient because now that sub is, there's no need for that sub assembly. You can assemble this whole product and you can add these just at the end, just toss them in during the final assembly. And then you can just test them immediately because, I mean, that's when, when you want to test these components to make sure that they work with the switch that's inside there. So it all worked out very well. Um, I added fins to the fan housing as an aligning feature. Here's the fins here. So they go all the way down. I uh, took advantage of the need of a draft angle. So the draft angle is, is, is made so it can still be injection molded. And also, so this top part here is at its widest. It's one of the parts at its widest. So there is room for error when you're putting this in, and you should be able to feel twisting around um, that is going into the, the, it's aligning up correctly inside of here, because there are little rods that stick out, uh, or, or pins that stick out, that this a pin will go right into here, and then you'll take a screw from the other side and screw it right on in. So it's going to be it's much easier still somewhat blind operation but at least you can detect it um reduce the mode selector to one part yet yeah. i had to modify the shell oh it looks like I had a little bit of formatting error when i switched this to powerpoint from google slides but it's still okay um so i did add that slots in here into the shell for this new part to keep the functionality of it but uh, i think that's acceptable it's such a it's still manufacturable and the slots are all three of these slots the middle one was already existing and these two slots since they are smaller than this middle one um, the slots are completely covered in by uh, from the user so the user would never notice those slots all right great okay, overview of component manufacturing i talked about this a little bit but it's all injection molded and it was my goal to keep it that way basically um i just wanted to make something that just need you just needed to modify some of the tooling for the injection molding and all these components will still work uh, they can all still work as injection molding so you can see all the planes um the pulling directions just pull from left to right on these two components here um i think that worked out really really nice this can still be injection molded i, I had to think of a couple had a couple of redesigns for this but this one seemed to be the easiest one to injection mold i still need to add it it would be better with a actual draft angle on this on these tabs that stick out but nonetheless i mean that, that's such an easy thing to add. and then just adding slit uh yeah, slots in here uh really does not uh, affect manufacturability so I was, I was super happy with that super happy with that uh, what would i have done differently though um i think there was i was really happy with reducing the set i mean i completely my goal of getting rid of a sub assembly number one and I maintained the same level of manufacturability. So I was super happy with what I was able to accomplish, but I still think there was opportunity to redesign those paper tubes and electronic heaters. Those were things I was not very familiar with, not familiar with the manufacturing process of them. And I, I just didn't touch them because I, I felt like I had enough to change. Uh, but the electronics are really complicated, are too complicated for this device uh the big thing i noticed is the three and there's three individual diodes that have to be soldered in directly into this device and they're all pointing in different directions 
So I think what been my goal to rewire, reroute the wires so all the diodes are routed in the same direction because that is just such an easy area for fear, just a pokey oak right there. Um, and possible opportunity for part reduction. There's a paper tube and there are two, uh, uh, two cutouts of paper that make up the heating assembly. Three cuts of paper, I felt like, you know, maybe there's some folding or something that could be done to reduce it down to one part or two parts, but I don't know. And then research a better off-the-shelf switch. Um, this also I saw as a huge mistake, a potential or for potential error. The current switch only uses three of the existing eight terminals. This is an off-the-shelf part too. So I felt like this could definitely be simplified because there, <laughs> there's absolutely going to be mistakes made, I'm sure. Because um, they were all, all the terminals are hand soldered to. So if you mistakenly solder to the wrong uh, terminal, you're going to ruin the entire product. So, and then, I mean, you're going to generate scrap. It's hard to detect that uh, failure mode, I feel like. And it, once you do detect, I mean, that's just a total rework. Um, so, you know, if you could reduce, instead of having something with eight terminals, something with only three terminals, so you didn't make that mistake, uh, I think that would be a great puppy oak to do as well. So that's all I would have done differently. All right, and that concludes my presentation. Thank you guys.